Welcome to the Proxy Academy. This channel is your source of knowledge on printing, designing and using proxies. Always remember the golden rules of proxies. You can't use proxies on FNM or in other official events. Make sure your playgroup is okay with proxies and never trade or sell proxies. Good afternoon class. So today we're going to look at how do you actually do a order of proxies on makeplaincards.com. Go to their website of course and then you click here on game cards. Scroll down until you find the custom game card option and click that. Once this page has loaded we're going to tweak a couple of settings. The first one is the card stock which is the quality of cards or the cardboard they're going to use for the cards. Personally I use S30. They're a little bit cheaper, but I feel once they're sleeved, I can't tell them from a regular magic card anyways. Other people swear by the S33. It's a bit of a higher quality and they're closer to real magic cards if you don't have them sleeved. But once you have them sleeved, I feel they are like compatible to an S30 anyways, so I usually go with the S30. Then it's the size of your order. Ignore the size of deck here, this is the size of your order. You can't order, say, 75 cards, it's going to be 72 or 90 cards, or 108, there's no in-between these. Printing type, we don't need to care about that one. Finish, we don't need to care about that one either. Booklets, we don't need to care about. Packaging, however, shrink wrapped is like your regular shrink wrap. They wrap it in plastic, send it like that. If your order supports it, I do recommend using a plain white tuck box. It's like a regular, you know, these like old deck boxes you got that was made of cardboard. And then you have your cards in those. But you can only order, I think it's 218 cards. 216 cards. Over that, you can't choose that alternative. So if you choose a larger, I'd just go with shrink wrapped. The other packaging alternatives is just too expensive for my taste. And if you're wondering about how much is this going to cost me, it's the first row here you're going to look at, 1 to 5. If you were to say order 30 copies of this set of cards, you'd have them for 4.35 a piece. But since you're probably just going to order one, it's the first row. You'll see that actually updates if we switch around here. The price updates accordingly, so you can actually check how much is 72 cards in S30 going to cost me. It's going to cost you $17. So as you can see here, a smaller order is pretty pricey per card. 695 for 18 cards, that's quite a lot. If you go up a bit, say 216, then they're going to be 41.70 for 216. That's about 20 cents per card. If you go even higher, say 504, they're also going to come up at around 18 cents per card. Then of course you have to add shipping, so maybe you land at 25 per card. And once you've set all of this, you just click start your design. Here it's going to ask you again, like what packaging do you want? We still want shrink wrapped. How many cards? You could theoretically go with like 16 in an 18 order, but you're still going to pay for the full 18 cards, so I don't see any reason why not to keep it at 18. And then here they ask you, what do you want for your card front? No image, just color and background text. We don't want that. Image and text, yeah. And we want different images on all the fronts. Otherwise, I don't... If you were to order like 18, I don't know, 18 force of wills, sure you can do that, but I would probably go with this alternative. And it's going to open up this editor here. Now we need to populate this with some cards. And uh, you can't just take a scryfall scan or something, you need to actually source ready-made proxy cards. And to do that, we're going to use a website called mpcautofill.com. I'm going to link that one in the description as well. You see this here? It's done by a guy who goes by the name of Chelyax. And uh, it's a way of automatically search through a plethora of um, Google Drives where people have put their ready-made proxies for you. So in this little search box here, you're just going to input what you want in your order. And I've already decided, I got it here in the text file. So here we are. Uh, I'm going to order, you see, three visits, vapors, bauble, two cultivate, because I want two different arts for it. Dark depths, 
Uh, if you want a token, you can put T colon, then the name of the token. So T colon Marit Lodge, because I want the Marit Lodge token with the Dark Depth. You can also put T colon Soldier, T colon Angel, if you want tokens. Billy Goose, Bird of Paradise, Academy Rector, and Arena Rector. Once you input all your after in this box here, just click Submit. And it will load all the card arts that are available for the cards you input. Then you use these little arrows to cycle between different arts. See which ones are available. You see a fancy white border one, some custom art, white text on black background. I'm gonna go with this one. I, I, I really like the extended art ones. Same here, we're just gonna find it. That one. Cultivate. I want this one. And then I want... Uh, yeah, this one is also really fancy. I really like the old border. I think they look a bit more classy, actually. Oh, there it was. This one is so cute. Amazing. How we can see I spelled the name wrong. So you can just click the name and then we type it out again. Yeah, I missed the S. Here we are, and I know I'm after that one. That. Ah, let's go with that one. I like this one. Tokens again. Cycle between. Find what you want. And they just do the same with all the others. Something worth mentioning here, actually. If you look down here at the name, this is the who has created this proxy. And then what is the resolution? High numbers generally mean sharper images. But sometimes the only ones available might be like 460, 450. Those still come out fine. But the text might be a little less sharp than if you have a really high DPI. Make playing cards recommends that you don't go underneath 300. I've never printed something under 300 myself, but since they recommend it, I, I trust their judgment. And lastly, this one here controls the card back that you're after. There's a couple of shoes from here. My personal favorite is this one. You can also look at all of them by clicking this one here, switch the backs, so we can see all the card backs. So now you might be asking, why a custom card back? Why don't we just print the regular magic card back? And there's two good reasons for this. The first one is that MPC, they won't print the regular magic card back on cards. So there's no point in even trying. The second argument is that we don't want these cards to be mistaken for real magic cards. These are proxies. They're meant to be perceived as proxies. And having a custom card back reduces the chances significantly, almost to the point that it's impossible to think that these are real magic cards. So that's why. That's why we go with custom card backs instead of the regular magic card back. When you're ready and set everything up, you press this one here, download all images. You see this little text here, you need to enable pop-ups, because this one is going to open up a lot of tabs. On Chrome, if you don't have it enabled, there's going to be like a little icon up here that says that it blocked a lot of tabs. On Firefox, there's a yellow banner that says that, hey, I blocked a lot of tabs, so you'll have to click enable. I don't know what it does on Safari. I haven't tried it there. If click this one, we'll see it opens a lot of tabs. A lot of tabs, and there we see they download, and there we go. Now we're ready to go back to make playing cards again. So once all the cards have been downloaded, we'll be back to this page here and we'll click Upload Images. Alright, so he here we see all the cards that we've downloaded. Perfect, we're going to open all of these. Uh, we don't need to upload the back side here, because the, all of these are going to be front side cards. We mark them all and click Open. We'll see here, they start uploading to MPC. This is going to take a while. Alright, so once all the cards have been uploaded, you can very simply just grab a card here on the left and pull it into one of these card slots. And you'll see it appear here. Another alternative is just to double click it and we'll add it into the next available slot automatically for you. You can also rearrange cards here if you want to by just dragging them onto one another. And say you upload one too many and want to replace it, you can drag a card from the right here straight on top of it to instantly replace it. So once we've uploaded all the cards we want here, we'll click next step to go on to step two. Here you can add text and effects and stuff to cards 
I don't know, I've never used this. Some people talk about this red dashed line a bit. It sometimes appears a bit off-center. Or, in the case of a legendary card, it might cut the crown here slightly as you see. I've never cared about this dashed line. It indicates what they call the, uh, the bleed zone. And uh, sometimes you might see like a speck of color. And uh, the cards might be cut off slightly off center. But at most up to the red dashed line. Kind of their explanation at least. I've never had a card miscut that bad. You can see it's slightly miscut at times, but I've never really cared about this dash line and I've never really had any problems. So don't, don't put too much thought into it. It'll be fine. So when we go to step three, here it's going to ask us to put the card backs. Now, you could make different card backs for all of them using the same technique as in step 1, different images. But I'm going to go with a single card back image. So it's going to ask us to upload one card. And this time we're going to choose the card back that we downloaded here. Alright, so once it's uploaded, we do the same thing. We grab the card, we drag it onto here, drop it and... Well, that looks good. All right, let's go to the next step. Again, we can add text or color or stuff to it. Look at the dashed line. Again, I've never cared. Yes, yes, go forward. So here we get a preview of our order. Here we can look, did we get the right amount of cards? Did we get the cards we want? Uh, you can click on them to see a, a zoomed in view of it. Yeah, looks fine. And this one, yeah, it looks fine. All right, great. So once you're done with all of this, click Add to Cart. Again here, we can preview it. You can change the packaging if you want to, change the card stock and stuff. I'm usually just fine with this here. We just go to checkout. Would you like to add a box? This one, just no thanks. They're going to ask you to make an account or check out as a guest. Making an account can be a good idea because it's easier to track your order. You can look at your orders that you've made. Maybe look, did I order this card or not? So I'm going to log into my account here and we'll take it from there. Once you've signed up, created an account or logged into your existing account, they're gonna ask you for what payment method do you want to use. I prefer using PayPal. You can use a credit card if you want to. But uh, I'd rather have at least a front going through a third party with payments rather than inputting my credit card number directly. But it's up to you. Once the next page load, they're going to ask you for a billing address and a shipping address. So you just input your, your data here as normal. They're also going to ask you about shipping methods, express or standard. In my experience, the standard one takes about a month to Northern Europe and not 14 to 18 business days, as they say here. But for a smaller order, I don't think it's worth going with Express and Tracking. I've actually only ordered Express with Tracking once, and that's the only time I've actually had to pay customs for my order. So I'm probably not doing that again. But if you're making a really big pricey order, then the tracking part of it might actually be worth it. So. You choose whatever you feel suits you. Once you've filled out all your information, chosen your delivery method, click proceed, you'll end up on this page. Your order is filled now, you've gotten an order number. You can still make a modification to it though, if you'd like to. But if everything looks fine, you just click checkout here and it will show you the payment window for whatever payment method you used. Often providing payment, you're gonna end up on this page. You see payment successful. After here, you don't really need to do anything more. You just need to wait for your order to arrive. And uh, yeah, you've finished an order at MPC. If you immediately go to your page on MPC after making an order, check your orders and go to incomplete. You'll see the order you just made standing here under status pending payments. But we just paid, you might think. 
Well, it takes them a couple of hours sometimes to update this status. So give it, give it a couple of hours. And if it still isn't updated, you can contact their customer support via this contact us link here. One thing I forgot to mention is if you want to pre-check what is the shipping cost going to be, you can actually do that if you go to makeplanecards.com slash shipping.aspx. I'll link it down in the description. Once you're here, you choose your country, this drop down here. And then you go to expand the playing card section. We're going to find the poker sized S30 standard smooth. Choose the deck size, so say we want to order 360 cards. We want to order one set of cards like that. We scroll all the way to the bottom and we click calculate delivery cost. And here we got the answers. It would cost us $20 shipping for 360 cards and they estimate around 8 to 10 business days. This is seldom correct in my experience, it usually takes at least a double. Alright, so that was what I had on um, how to make an NPC order for some affordable proxies in really good quality. Stay tuned, because later on I'm going to make a video on automated tools for making these orders as well. But now you at least know the basics on how to do this manually. Please like this video, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content on high quality proxies. If you got any questions or suggestions on what more to make videos of, please leave a comment below. I will read them all and I will comment on as many as possible. Thank you so much and have a good evening.